are looking at um, this cell simu simulation and um, I want to go through it with you because um, it looks a little overwhelming and intimidating and a lot of words and a lot of uh, sciencey words. So um, I'm going to talk this um, out with you as we look at the simulation. And so this week we're talking about cell transport and how a cell gets the things that it needs and gets rid of the things that it doesn't need. Think about um, us. We need food to survive or nutrients. We need water, so we have to take that in. But we also need, and we have lots of other things we need, but to keep it simple, food and water are pretty basic things that we need. And we need to get rid of things that we don't need. We breathe out um, carbon dioxide because we don't. our bodies don't need that. Uh, we take in, we breathe in oxygen because all the cells in our body need oxygen for energy. And then we breathe out the waste product, which is carbon dioxide. We go to the bathroom to get rid of waste. So we have to take in things we need and get rid of things we don't need. All living things need to take in what they need and get rid of what they don't. And so do cells. So everything that we need our cells and, and take in and get rid of, our cells do that on a microscopic cellular level. And what helps our cells get what they need and get rid of what they don't is um, one of our organelles we talked about, um, the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is the border patrol, right? Um, it's going to let certain things in and let certain things out. Um, so when we look at this um, uh, simulation, um, we're going to see how the cell does that. So let's look at the instructions. I'm going to read it. You can follow along. The internal environment of a living cell is constantly changing, and yet the cell needs to maintain a certain balance in order to survive. It needs to take in water, food, oxygen, and other materials. It needs to expel or get rid of excess water, wastes, and the substances it produces that other cells in the body may need. To help maintain the stable internal environments, the cell membrane contains structures that regulate the movement of substances into and out of the cell. So we have labels here um, that if we click on them, it'll explain what they are and what they do. Um, but some of these we don't really need to go into great detail about um, for sixth grade. You'll probably learn more about this when you're in um, high school biology. What we want to focus on mostly this week is how cells get what they need, get rid of what they don't through process called diffusion and osmosis. In the video that you watched yesterday, um, you learned a little bit about diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion is when we have lots of um, molecules together in high concentration and they want to move to areas of low concentration. So think about when you put um, a drop of food coloring in water. It's very concentrated at first and dark when it first gets into the water, but then those molecules start from that very concentrated uh, molecules together. They start to spread out through the water and you can see it very clearly as it spreads through the water. And eventually the water is going to be all the same color. And that's when it's reached equilibrium. The molecules are balanced um, and spread out evenly through the water. Um, same thing when you are cooking uh, let's say you're baking cookies at home and chocolate chip cookies are my favorite. So if I'm putting the chocolate chip cookies in the oven, they start to bake, you start to smell the cookies. And then maybe my son who's upstairs in his room, that smell um, diffused through the air and got to his room and he starts coming downstairs and says, hey mom, can I have a cookie? Okay. You can smell it from upstairs. So the molecules of the smells that were in the kitchen 
are now spreading out to the rest of the house. So high concentration of molecules spreading out. Same thing if you um, smell a skunk in your neighborhood. Maybe um, there was a skunk that got scared by a dog, sprayed a dog, and you'll smell a skunk when you go outside. That skunk smell started off in a uh, area and then it spread out. So that is diffusion. There's no energy involved. Those molecule, molecules are just moving on their own, spreading out on their own. Um, there's also a special kind of diffusion you also saw in the video um, from the first assignment called osmosis. Osmosis is diffusion, but it's diffusion of water across a membrane. So like a cell membrane. So when water is moving across a membrane, that is a specific type of diffusion um, called osmosis. Now, let's look at what we've got here on this um, diagram. We see this purple figure, um, the purple on the right side, that's the inside of the cell. The white side on the left is the outside of the cell. We've got these um, channels is what they call them, uh, orange, green, blue, and purple color-coded channels here. Um, and those are just kind of special doorways to let certain things into or out of the cell. And then you've got between these little doorways, you've got the phospholipid bilayer. So it's by means two layer, so two layers of these um, phospholipids. Um, and you can see that it looks like little balloons hanging down one way and the other way. And um, so certain substances are able to easily pass through that phospholipid bilayer, but some things need to go through those special channels or special doors that we see. Um, since we're focusing on diffusion and osmosis, we're not going to worry about um, anything that needs energy or active transport to move it across the membrane. Um, so I will be skipping over a couple of these substances. I want to, um, as we go through the substances, we're going to count and see how they move because we want to see that these molecules are moving where you have higher concentration to lower concentration. So if you have more molecules on one side of the cell and fewer molecules on the other, the molecules are gonna move where there's fewer until they're balanced. So we're gonna start with the oxygen. Notice oxygen is O2, so you got two oxygen molecules. Let's count what we see on the inside of the cell for this oxygen, these two um, blue circles. So we got one here, one oxygen molecule, two, and three, and um, I think that's right. Then over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. So we have, looks like we might have another one over here. So one, two, three, four over here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we have seven on the outside and three or four on the inside, the molecules of oxygen are going to move in which direction? Are they going to want to move into the cell where there's fewer? or out of the cell where there's more. They're gonna to wanna to move into the cell where there's fewer oxygen molecules. because they wanna move where it's higher to lower. They're moving towards the lower. So let's watch. They should be moving into the cell. Yay. And so they will move into the cell again until it's equilibrium or balanced on both sides. Next, we have carbon dioxide, CO2. So it's a uh, carbon um, and two oxygens. So we've got this little symbol here. And I'm going to count what's on the inside. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven 
of these carbon dioxide molecules on the inside. And on the outside, we have one, two, three. So we have seven on the inside and three on the outside. So are the molecules gonna move out to where there's only three or in to where there's seven? Are the molecules gonna move out of the cell or into the cell? They're gonna move, let's see. They're moving out because you had a higher concentration inside the cell than you had on the outside of the cell. So they're gonna to move to where you have more out to where you have less. All right, so moved out. Glucose, glucose is gonna use this special door right here, this uh, glute transporter, but these molecules, glucose is a, a sugar. These molecules are still gonna move from high to low concentration, but instead of going through the, the bilayer, they're gonna go through this special passageway. So let's see, let's count the glucose on the inside. We've got one, two is all I see on the inside. On the outside, we've got one, two, three, four. So is that right? One, two, three, four, yeah. Which direction is it gonna move? Is it gonna go into the cell? Or are the molecules gonna move out of the cell? So remember, we move from high to low concentration. So will the molecules outside move in or the ones inside move out? Well, let's see. They are moving inside. So they are gonna move um, uh, into the cell to balance out. All right. Potassium is this, oops, I just clicked it but we can see what it's doing. So potassium again is going to move through the ion channel and it also is going to move from high to low concentration through diffusion. So let's look and see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on the outside of the cell and one, two, three on the inside of the cell. So which direction are they gonna move? Into or out of? And I think, we already saw it, they get, they're gonna move into the cell um, to help balance it out. All right, and I think quite a few moved in, right? So we have more balance, equilibrium. I'm gonna skip over the sodium because that's gonna, going to need um, energy and ATP. And so we don't need to worry about that one this year. But um, here we're going to look at water. And remember, water moving across the membrane is osmosis. It's still going to move from areas of high concentration to low concentration because it's a type of diffusion. Passive transport doesn't need energy. It's just going to move across the membrane from high to low concentration. So water looks like this, looks like a little Mickey Mouse, right? H2O, a hydrogen and two oxygens. Um, no, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Thank you. Um, so let's count it out. One, two, three, four waters over here on the inside, on the in, four on the inside and one, two, three, four, Five on the outside. Let me make sure I counted that correct on the inside. One, two, three, four, five on the inside. And one, two, three, four, five on the outside. So it's already in equilibrium. So do you think they're just not going to move? Well, they actually still do move, but they're going to move together. Some will move out while others move in and vice versa. So even if you have equilibrium, you're still going to have movement um, into and out of the cell, but it'll maintain its, its equilibrium. So let's watch. And so one went out, one went in, and it's still balanced. And also it can use this, um, water can go through the phospholipid bilayer, but it can also go through this aquaporin channel. 
So that, that was our simulation on um, how cells get the things they need, get rid of the things that they don't need through passive transport um, of diffusion and osmosis.